There is a harsh truth athletes try to hide from. That bad form is not a matter of if, but when. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a rising star, sooner or later you'll find yourself trapped in the clutches of poor performance. It is an athletic inevitability. But here's the chilling reality. Poor form often isn't just a passing blip on the radar. No, it's a storm that can linger, grow darker, and more menacing with every missed opportunity. Entire careers can crumble into obscurity if athletes let a bad patch snowball out of control. However, there is hope, a light that can guide you out of the abyss. That light is the five-step framework I'm about to reveal. One that can break the cycle of poor form for good and allow you to resume your pathway to peak performance. These are the keys to your comeback. So let's get started. Right, so the first step to break this cycle of bad form is to name and shame. If you think about it, when you face a bad patch in your performances, you'll often feel ashamed of yourself. And let me tell you, this is not a bad thing. Every emotion has a purpose, and the purpose of this one is to get you to remember that you're better than what you've been doing or what you've done recently. Something that a lot of athletes make the mistake of when facing a bad period of form is to just shy away from it. Just hope that things will get better or maybe ignore the problem itself. But if you do this, you will continue to perform even worse as the weeks go by and the rest of the season plays out. Instead, what you have to do is lift your head, look yourself head on in the mirror and name and shame yourself. But this shaming is not just about cussing yourself out as a person. No, it's about identifying the contributing behavior and other possible variables that are causing your bad performances. You must reflect deeply on your technique, your mindset or physical condition. Understanding the problem is crucial. To do this, I seriously recommend getting out a pen and paper or a Word doc on your laptop or even a notes page on your phone. You then want to write out one simple prompt question. Why am I performing poorly? And then you should set a timer for 10 minutes. Yes, 10 minutes just on this one question. Because this forces you to really reflect deeply and confront the harsh, honest truths that a part of you just doesn't want to admit. I ran through this exercise with an athlete a while ago and he couldn't think of anything more after only two minutes of this. So we paused the clock and we took a look at what he'd written. And he was a striker, so he'd been on a bit of a goal drought and had just wrote down a few things like, I'm tired and I have low energy. So I said to this player, for everything that you've written, you need to follow the breadcrumbs. Now, what I mean by this is for everything you write, you need to add a because. And the reason for this is because the initial things that you write down as to why you're playing badly are going to be surface level. Things like, I'm tired or I have low energy you need to go deeper and find out the contributing factors for those things. So this athlete then did this for the next eight minutes and the more he added becauses, the more detail he managed to produce. And from this, we identified that yes, he had low energy and was tired, but this was being driven by a number of factors we could then do something about. He was tired because he was only getting about five or six hours of sleep a night. He wasn't consistently eating breakfast and he wasn't on keeping on top of his schoolwork and this was making him super stressed. So the initial things you come up with during this exercise typically are the naming, but then adding these becauses are the shaming because nine times out of 10, these are things that ultimately are on you and are your responsibility. You're shaming yourself for not taking control of these things earlier. Every athlete has the odd bad performance here and there, and that can be down to bad luck or just an off day. But those who consistently perform bad, the honest truth is that it's their problem because they've not confronted themselves head on. But once you've done this first step, you've laid the foundation to break the cycle of poor performance. And once this foundation is in place, you can then move on to step two. Who do I need to become? Once you've identified the issues that are behind your poor form, there's a need to set clear and achievable goals that you need to work towards. Goals that will get you out of this performance rut. And what's really important here is that these goals need to be identity focused. The reason for this is because psychologists have found time and time again that people have the best chance of changing something in their lives if they set goals related to shifts in identity. For example, people are much more likely to quit smoking without any relapses if they label themselves as a non smoker rather than someone who is just trying to quit smoking. The former is an identity label and it seems more fixed. It's a clear thing to be and it doesn't allow for temptations or pressures to set in. So if someone offers a cigarette to the person who's trying to quit and they say, I'm not a smoker, the other person will just leave them alone. But if that person trying to quit says, I'm trying to quit, that opens up the possibility of them getting tempted by the other person saying something like, oh, just have one. And so this same idea applies to athletes in getting out of a bad run of form. You want to identify the identity of the type of performer you want to become. Now, this might be a former version of yourself when you're playing well, or it might be a complete new reinvention into a new type of performer. So one of the best ways of doing this is to create your own alter ego, which is something I recommend all athletes do. So it's worth watching the video at the top for a full account on that. But the short version is that you need to create a clear performance identity that encapsulates the very best traits and characteristics that make you 100% confident in your ability to perform 
perform your absolute best. All fighters have these in boxing and UFC. Their fighter names allow them to go into the ring or octagon completely fearless. So you want to name your alter ego and then list out the types of behaviors and actions that he or she takes. For example, you could be a basketball player and call yourself Trigger because performing your best is about jacking up shots before your opponent can get near you or you're able to pull out passes that no one saw coming. So just think of three to five key things that signal you're performing your absolute best and think about what type of character those things align to. And then when you step into that character, you'll have a newfound confidence to break away from that cycle of bad form and start getting back to your absolute best. But I appreciate if you have a bad run of form, it's not that easy to instantly click click into this new identity and believe that you can start dominating again. So step three is an important but often underappreciated one. And this step is breaking barriers. So what we mean here is that despite working internally to name and shame yourself and then set these identity-based goals surrounding your performance, there are of course a number of external factors that contribute to your performance. And what you tend to find is that your brain loves to make associations, even ones that can be harmful or problematic to us. And these associations can operate at a subconscious level. So what you need to do is break through these associations that your brain has made that have caused a cycle of poor performance to continue over a period of time that's much longer than you would have liked. And the types of things these associations relate to can be scenery or environment, time of day, and just general routines. So if you've had a few weeks of feeling a sense of dread in the mornings before going to the gym, you may want to try and break that cycle by deciding to switch up the time of day that you go to the gym, maybe trying in the afternoon or evening. Or if you're feeling anxious heading to the field that you do some individual practice on, try going to a different field for a change. The reason for this is because as said, our brains make associations. They're basically pattern recognition systems. So if you've had five bad training sessions in a row on a particular pitch, then your brain has taken note of that. And it's then causing you to feel anxious, almost as an alarm bell to try and convince yourself to not put yourself through the same negative, upsetting and frustrating situation. But if you flip the script and change those routines of when you work out or where you work out, your brain can't run the same line of mental code that is ultimately leaving you feel awful about your training and performances. Instead, you're resetting it and giving yourself a fresh start. And when we experience a fresh start, naturally our brains are a bit more switched on and we tend to have a surge in motivation and focus. This is literally called the fresh start effect. Typically, this occurs during what are called temporal landmarks, which are times in our lives that stand out from other unremarkable days and break our normal behavior patterns. It's why people set New Year's resolutions or will look to start new behavior on the first day of the month or just even Mondays. When people make that start, they get this newfound surge of optimism and everything else bad that's been happening recently just gets easily forgotten. So to break those mental barriers that are keeping you stuck in a period of bad form, look to carve out a fresh start in some shape or form. As said, this can be training at a different time or place, but it can also be super simple things like wearing a new workout top or using a new racket or bat or putting on a new pair of boots or cleats. We've all been there, that childish excitement of using or wearing a new bit of kit for the first time, you naturally have this surge in energy and confidence. And this is a great way to break away from poor form and just start the fresh that you're looking for. Something else that will let you start fresh is Podia, who I'm delighted to say are today's video sponsor. If you've had a slump in your business or want to start a new online business, then you must check out Podia. Earlier in the year, I was in a bit of a business slump myself, but since the summer, I've used Podia to have a fresh start. Using just one login into my Podia account, I've been able to build a new website, host and sell my online course, and also let people book in for one-to-one -one coaching with me. But one thing in particular I've really loved using Podia for is building more of a relationship with you guys through my weekly email newsletter, Midweek Mindset. Podia's email templates feature is awesome. There's so many different email templates that you can use and then customize to fit the message that you wanna share with your audience. In a few simple clicks, you can change everything from the colors, the fonts, and add images so that you can send out something people actually want to read each week. The emails you send look great on all devices, and I also love having the option of just sending myself test emails to make sure that everything is in good order before sending it on to you guys. So if you want to start sharing your message with like-minded people, I seriously recommend checking out Podia. You can sign up for free today with my link in the description below. So thanks again to Podia for making this video happen, and let's get back to it. Right, so now you've got a clear picture on what needs to improve as well as creating the conditions for a fresh start. Step four is now all about deliberate practice. Again, if you've watched me for a while, you'll have heard me bang on about this before, but it's honestly one of the most important concepts any athlete can learn if they want to elevate their game. Deliberate practice is simply practice which is intentional. You're not just rocking up and going through the motions. Instead, you're setting clear intentions ahead of time so that your practice can be as focused and effective as possible. So if you've been as thorough as possible in steps one and two, you'll have a very clear picture of what things you need to work on 
in your practice that will help you get out of bad form. With these things, you should set a specific target for the amount of reps or the time spent working on a particular skill or drill. So if we look at someone like Steph Curry, the greatest three-point shooter in NBA history, in the heart of the season, Steph is known for putting up 300 shots after every single practice. But it doesn't stop there. During the off-season, he takes it up a notch, increasing his daily shot count to 500. But what's truly remarkable is the method behind this madness. Steph doesn't just throw up random shots, he has a precise plan. He practices three specific types of shots, each designed to sharpen different aspects of his game. First, he hones his spark freeze. You'll find him shooting from the same spot on the floor repeatedly, perfecting his long range accuracy. Next, he goes into dribble pull-ups, focusing on his lightning fast transition from dribbling to shooting. And this practice just sharpens his quick trigger, a key element of his game that sets him apart from everyone else. And the finishing touch to his rigorous routine, floaters. These graceful shots allow him to loft the ball up over towering defenders when he charges towards the basket, proving that even a superstar like Curry continues to refine his skills through purposeful, disciplined practice. It literally comes down to reps, but they have to be good quality, ordered and measured reps. Because if you set a number, that gives you an objective focus. And once you reach that number, that is hard, solid data. Whenever you feel a dip in confidence due to having a bit of bad form, one of the best things you can do to shake out of that is look at the data because the numbers don't lie. If you've done a thousand shots in a week, sure, you might not have made all of them, but you've put the reps in. And if those have been done deliberately and with focus like Steph Curry, you will be better. Yes, this also relies on adjustments in form or technique, but if you're self-correcting and continue to put up a high number of reps, you're going to be much more confident in your ability to perform. Because true confidence only comes in knowing that you're prepared, that you've done the work necessary to perform optimally. You can only be confident in breaking a cycle of bad form if you've put the work in. But as said, this has to be deliberate work. And then lastly, our final step of the process is step five, hype the baby. What the hell does that mean? Well, let's think about a baby first learning to walk. It gets up, is a bit unsteady, and then falls on its ass. But what happens after that? The baby's parents don't say, ah, oh, unlucky lad, walking's not for you. They say, try again, you almost had it. So the baby gets up, it wobbles, but then it takes one step, wobbles, and then falls on its ass again. But the parents again don't say, nah mate, this walking thing is not happening. They clap, they cheer, they go wild for the baby taking its first step. And the baby loves this encouragement. So they get up again, they wobble, but they take two steps, wobble a bit more and then take one more step. And then again, just falls flat on its ass. But the parents are going mental this time, clapping, cheering, and willing the baby to just do it again and again. And the baby keeps going as long as they get the hype. They don't care that they keep falling flat on their ass because they're loving that they're taking more steps each time and they're feeling less shaky when doing it. If a baby can acknowledge small forms of progress and keep pushing on, then what's your excuse? Even after running through the previous four steps, I get it, you'll still have some doubts. You'll still not make every shot or run through the drill perfectly. You'll fall over, you'll screw up, and you'll make mistakes. So what? Previously, it might have been that every 10 shots, you were only getting five on target. Now you're getting seven or eight. That's still progress. That's worth hyping yourself up for. So for once in your life, if you wanna get out of a bad patch of form, You've got to be a baby, but not the traditional kind. Don't whine and cry, just keep getting back up. Take one more step than you did last time and hype yourself up for it. We all need positive reinforcement. It's one of the biggest forces that drives human behavior. If we get any form of reward from doing something, we're compelled to want to do it again and again. This can be praise from others, but it should also be about patting yourself on the back for making progress, even if it's a tiny amount, because when you're going through a bad patch, you need all the help and hype you can get. Each tiny bit of progress is another tiny step out of the hole that you're currently in. So just remember, don't be too harsh on yourself. All progress is progress. And if you keep that in mind, you'll soon be back to your best. One other thing that can really help with getting over bad form is breaking your limiting beliefs. So if you have some of those, then you should watch this next video here.